At the time, people didn't know it, but the 1960s for comics would bring new characters that would not only change the landscape for comics forever, but the entire world. Superhero comics had kind of fallen out of fashion earlier, but they're starting to make a comeback. Monster and love stories that were once the top sellers had started to wane. DC Comics had just started to bring back an updated version of their Golden Age counterparts, and they were selling very well. Over at Marvel, they're still clinging to those monster and sci-fi stories, but that was all about to change due to one man, Stan the Man Lee. He was going to quit after having to work with them for decades, but his wife told him before he leaves, why not write the stories you want to write? So with a team of artists and writers dubbed the Marvel's bullpen, they would create a renaissance in comics. No longer being second fiddle to DC, they would come out on top with these new characters and titles. Although technically this was the Silver Age of comics, the 1960s should actually be the Marvel Age of comics. So let's take a look at the top 10 comics for investing from the 1960s. Tales to Astonish 27, the first appearance of Ant-Man. This was originally just a one-off sci-fi story about a scientist named Henry Pym, when Marvel was still doing only monsters and sci-fi stories. Then when Marvel started to focus more on superheroes, Stan Lee remembered his story about a shrinking man named Henry Pym. That issue sold very well, so they decided to bring him back, but as a superhero. They later gave him a nickname of Hank, and then also a sidekick, the Wasp. The issues didn't sell very well in the beginning, so they decided to enlarge him to Giant Man. Hank Pym later became the founding member of the Avengers, where he stayed at most of the time. The mantle of the Ant-Man has switched hands many times, with Scott Lang being the Ant-Man portrayed in the MCU movie franchise. Although mostly a lesser known character, the MCU has really pushed Ant-Man to new heights. Ant-Man has been featured in a wide range of media and is currently on his third solo movie for the MCU. In 2022, an AO on average sold for 19,800. Five years earlier in 2017, it averaged 14,900 and in 2012, that was 7,800. That had a five-year return of 33% and a 10-year return of 154%. The highest one ever sold for was back in 2013 for $200,000. Now, if you compare those 10-year returns to other investments, you got the Dow Jones at 151% in 10 years, the S&P 500 at 171%, Amazon, which was an amazing stock, was only at 574, Apple at 624%, and the real estate has been about 70% over those same 10 year span. Now, I know stocks, comics, and real estate, they're very different types of investments, but I'm just looking at the overall ROI, the return on your investment. Daredevil number one, the first appearance of Daredevil. First appearing in the 1964, the Marvel's Daredevil bears a lot of similarities to the Golden Age Daredevil by Leave Gleason Publications. This daredevil was created in 1940 and instead of being blind, he was a mute. And instead of having a billy club, he had a boomerang. Marvel's daredevil originally had a yellow and red costume, which didn't last very long. By issue seven, they had changed it to the costume that we all know and love, the all red costume. In the beginning through the 1960s, Daredevil had decent sales, but he could never really find his own persona. Then by the early 1970s, his comic began to flatline. Towards the end of the 1970s, it was nearing cancellation. They reduced the number of issues from being a monthly book to just coming out once every two months, hoping that would help the book. But it wasn't until a young, talented writer came and turned everything around. His name was Frank Miller. Originally coming on as an artist on issue 158, he would draw someone else's script. He really disliked the scripts he was given, so he threatened to quit. So Marvel decided to either cancel the series or give Miller the script writing duties. Miller drew and wrote the script starting with the issue 168. It sold so well that they brought it back to a monthly series. Daredevil finally found his own path and became a huge seller for Marvel going forward. Then Daredevil reached new heights when he got his own Netflix series, which was very popular. He popped up in video games, cartoons, and as soon will get his own MCU TV show. In 2022, a 9-4 averaged 65,200. In 2017, it was 22,500. And in 2012, that was 13,499. That has a five-year return of 190%, a 10-year return of 383%, with the highest one ever selling for 250,000. Avengers 1. 
the first appearance of the Avengers. After seeing the popularity of the DC's Justice League of America, Marvel wanted their own team of heroes as well. The Avengers were created to create a new line of books to sell and to cross-promote Marvel comic characters. An Iron Man fan might buy an Avengers book because Iron Man appears in them, and perhaps in turn takes an interest in Thor, who appears in the same book as a friend of Iron Man's. This would also help test out new characters to see how readers would respond before giving them their own comic series. The Avengers lineup would always be changing, adding or taking out characters. They would even spin off certain characters to have two sets of Avengers, such as the West Coast Avengers. The Avengers have always been in some form of media, either video games, many different iterations of an animated show, but it wasn't until the MCU brought together all their heroes at the same time for a massive spectacle film, The Avengers, where we saw them reach heights they've never reached before. The movie's built on an overarching story that pushed these movies into some of the highest grossing movies of all time, beating every other film record in history. Marvel will continue to push more and more of these Avengers movies, so expect this book to be more sought after with every generation. Avengers 1, an 8.5 in 2022 was averaging 28,600. In 2017, it was 16,000. And in 2012, it was a little over 13,000. That is a five year return of 79% and a 10 year return of 117%. Amazing Spider-Man number one, the second appearance of Spider-Man. Although this was his second appearance, this is also the start of one of the most sought after and valuable comic runs in comic book history. There's no run that has more key first appearances or key books in general than the Amazing Spider-Man run. Initially, his first appearance was Amazing Fantasy 15, but due to strong sales, they gave Spider-Man his own series. The series originally started out being published every two months, but quickly gained a following that saw it change to monthly. By focusing on Parker's everyday problems, Lee and Ditko created a groundbreaking, flawed, and self-doubting superhero, and the first major teenage superhero to be a protagonist and not a sidekick. Stan Lee would continue to write stories up until issue 100. Spider-Man isn't going anywhere. Add that to the fact that this is the most desired run in comic books. Yeah, this book is gonna continue to go up more and more over time. Amazing Spider-Man 1. In 2022, an 8.0 averaged 66,000. In 2017, it was 26,700. And in 2012, it was a little over 22,000. That is a five year return of 147% and a 10 year return of 191%. Journey in the Mystery 83, the first appearance of Thor. The series Journey in the Mystery, mostly dealt with monsters and sci fi at the time, was starting to wane. Stan Lee wanted to do something new for the next issue. He figured most people already knew about the Greek and Roman gods, but not many knew about Norse gods, so he picked Thor, but he wanted to update him for modern readers. So he decided to make him more of a superhero. He enlisted Jack Kirby to draw him, who actually had experience drawing Thor already for DC and Tales from the Unexpected 16. Many of the characteristics from DC's Thor transferred over to Marvel's Thor. Stan Lee didn't have time to write the script, so he had his brother, Larry, write the script for the first Thor issue. Thor became the dominant character in the Journey and Mystery series, so they retitled it Thor on issue 126. Although Thor has had a very successful run in comics, he never really transferred over to other forms of media. He had his first live action appearance in 1988's TV movie, The Incredible Hulk Returns never really getting his own full animated TV series other than that 1966 cartoon. He would appear though in any other Avengers animated TV show. Then when the MCU started going, they brought in Chris Hemsworth to portray Thor. The film franchise was a massive success, which spawned many, many sequels and also had the Thor character in all the Avengers movies. In 2022, a 9-4 sold for 432,000. 2017, a 9.4 was 191,000, and then 2012, it was 222,000. That has a five year return of 126% and a 10 year return of 94%. Tales of Suspense 39, the first appearance of Iron Man. Stan Lee wanted to make a character that no one would like, a capitalist who was in favor of war. This was also during the height of the Cold War and Stan Lee knew his readers hated war. So he thought he would flip the script a bit and create a character who was exactly who the readers would hate. 
Somehow it worked, and Iron Man became very popular. His original look was created by Jack Kirby, then Steve Ditko redesigned his costume to the classic red and yellow in issue 48. Iron Man went on to become one of the founding members of the Avengers. Stan Lee explored unique stories with Iron Man that he hadn't with other characters, such as Tony Stark being an alcoholic. A very interesting thing about Iron Man was Stan Lee said they really never got fan mail from girls, but when they did, it was always for Iron Man. Iron Man slowly grew to become one of Marvel's top characters of all time. He had an animated series as far back as 1966, later appearing and having his own animated series, appearing in many video games along the way as well. But it wasn't until Robert Downey Jr. portrayed him in the MCU's Iron Man film where Iron Man went from a lower tier Marvel character to many people's favorite of all time. Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man is responsible for the massive success of the MCU, and his character held everything together. Although Iron Man is no more in the MCU, that won't stop this book from reaching new heights. I expect at some point they'll either back up a truckload of money to Robert Downey Jr.'s house, or they'll just recast him. In 2022, a 9-2 sold for $167,000. In 2017, that was $65,000. And in 2012, that was slightly under $60,000. That had a five-year return of 158% and a 10-year return of 179%. Incredible Hulk number one, the first appearance of the Hulk. At the time, the Thing was the most popular character at Marvel. Stan Lee knew that people tend to like characters that are less than perfect. So he decided to combine some of the greatest characters of all time. Frankenstein and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Back in the 1960s, it took many months for sale figures to be finally reported. When they got the sales figures in for the Hulk comic series, they found out they were very, very low. They decided to cancel the initial series after only six issues. The Hulk would then pop up in other books like the Fantastic Four, The Avengers for a while. Then Jack Kirby got a letter from a college dormitory stating that they loved the Hulk so much they made the Hulk their college mascot. Because of that letter, they decided to have the Hulk co-star in Tales to Astonish, where he started to gain a following. Then that series ended and the Hulk went back to his own title starting with issue 102. Originally the Hulk was gray because Stan wanted a color that did not suggest any particular ethnic group. The colorist Stan Goldberg had trouble being consistent with the gray coloring though, so by the next issue they just made the Hulk his now traditional green color. Once the Hulk found his footing, he slowly gained in popularity. But he really took off in 1977 when they released a very successful TV series based off The Incredible Hulk. They changed a few things though, like changing the name of Bruce Banner to David Banner. Both Stan Lee and Lou Ferrigno said the reason for this change because the executives at CBS thought the name Bruce sounded too gayish. From there, the Hulk had multiple TV movies and had many animated shows, video games, and even a feature film prior to the MCU movies. Currently, the Hulk is one of the longest running characters in the MCU. Due to poor sales to begin with, there's actually less and less of these compared to others on this list, and it's actually pretty tough to find in a decent high grade. In 2022, a 7.5 averaged 95,000. In 2017, a 7.5 averaged 47,500. And then in 2012, it was nearly 18,000. That had a five-year return of 102% and a 10-year return of 435%. The Fantastic Four, starring Reed Richards, Stu Richards, Johnny Storm, Ben Grimm. Fantastic Four number one, the first appearance of the Fantastic Four, the comic book that started the entire Marvel renaissance. Martin Goodman, the owner of Marvel Comics at the time, heard that the new DC comic book called The Justice League of America was selling very well. He went to Stan Lee and said he should create a superhero team as superheroes were becoming more popular at the time. Stan Lee had been working at Marvel for many decades and was about to quit to change careers. His wife told him before he leaves, why not create stories you want to create? So with that piece of advice, he wrote The Fantastic Four, with Jack Kirby providing the visuals. Kirby drew inspiration from a previous DC title that he worked on, Challenges of the Unknown, that they took heavy inspiration from for the Fantastic Four. With Stan Lee ready to leave comics altogether, the Fantastic Four was a very unexpected success. So much so that they started to get fan mail, which Stan started printing in the comics by issue 3. The Fantastic Four became Marvel's most popular title for a while. They appeared in many different forms of media. They even got their first feature film debut in 1994 
Roger Corman Fantastic Four, which was made but never released. It was mostly just made to retain the film rights. They later appeared in 2005's Fantastic Four, which did all right, so they had a sequel. They rebooted the franchise in 2015, which was a complete disaster. The film was also a box office bomb. Now back in the hands of Marvel, Reed Richards had made his film debut in Doctor Strange 2, and soon the rest of the cast will as well. In 2022, a 9 sold for 314000 in 2017, 161000 and then in 2012, 145000 That had a 5-year return of 95% and a 10-year return of 116%, with the highest one ever selling for $1.5 million. X-Men number one, the first appearance of the X-Men. With the popularity of their other Marvel characters and their Fantastic Four team, Marvel wanted to make another team of superheroes. Originally, Stan Lee called them the Mutants, which was shot down, but he wanted to create a team where he didn't have to explain where their superpowers came from, that they were just born that way. They also took heavy inspiration from DC's Doom Patrol. The initial X-Men series wasn't a very big seller, and they tried one last ditch effort to help it by getting Neil Adams. That helped for a while, but soon sales got so poor they canceled the series. The people at Marvel loved the X-Men, so they kept the series going by just doing reprints of previous issues. Then in 1975, everything changed with giant size X-Men. The series found new blood of writers and artists who made a new cast of mutants. Quickly with the help of Wolverine, this new X-Men group became the most popular series at Marvel. There's no shortage of other mediums for the X-Men. From the birth of the video games to now, they continue to show up in TV shows, cartoons, and of course movies. At any given point, there is some sort of X-Men movie, cartoon, or TV show on. With its endless supply of characters, the X-Men are massive, and it all started with X-Men number one. I expect this comic to grow even more and more, and this comic is placed on many people's holy grail list. In 2022, a 9-0 sold for 120,000. In 2017, it was about 39,500, and then 2012 is about 30,000. That was a five-year return of 208%, a 10-year return of 301%. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man. Originally, the Amazing Fantasy series was just a placeholder to throw some odd and unused stories that Stan Lee would write and Steve Ditko would draw. Originally it was titled Amazing Adventures, but that comic wasn't selling very well so they changed it to Amazing Adult Fantasy because they were trying to gear it towards more grown-up readers. But during this time, the once top-selling monster and sci-fi stories were falling and with DC introducing more superheroes into comic books, the superhero genre began to have a resurgence. Stan Lee had an idea for a character which he thought would be a huge success. A kind of new superhero, one who would be a teenager but not a sidekick and one who would have every man doubts, neuroses, and money problems. But the owner over at Marvel Comics, Martin Goodman, didn't think this would be a huge seller, so he never really went forward with it. Then one day they decided to cancel the low-selling Amazing Adult Fantasy comic line, and Stanley thought this would be the perfect place to introduce his new character, Spider-Man, because the comic was being canceled anyways. Martin Goodman reluctantly agreed. They then changed the name to Amazing Fantasy, and with the last issue, they released the first appearance of Spider-Man. Originally, the cover was drawn by Ditko, but Stanley didn't really like the look of it, so had Jack Kirby draw just the cover. This ended up being one of Marvel's highest selling comics at the time. With the huge success, Marvel then launched Amazing Spider-Man series seven months later. Spider-Man has become Marvel's most iconic character. He has been featured in numerous video games and has had many different animated TV shows with a very popular one in the 1990s. He even had a live action TV series in the 1970s. He made his film debut in 2002 that was a massive success. And since then he's had a feature film every three to four years in each film making close to or more than a billion dollars in theaters. 
Spider-Man has gone to become one of the top selling superheroes of all time and the most recognizable. He isn't going anywhere anytime soon and this book will continue to climb in value for a very long time to come. In 2022, an 8.5 sold for $713,000. In 2017, it averaged $155,000. And in 2012, it was $108,000. That is a five-year return of 359% and a 10-year return of 558%. And at one point, a nine six sold for a record price of 3.6 million dollars so that was the top 10 comics for investing from the 1960s let me know in the comments below if you have any of these or you're hoping to get one of these maybe these are on your holy grail list let me know and have a great day